I wanted to have a bright colour display to use as a name badge for some events and indeed for these videos. Here we go. I've talked about coding for the display and building a PCB for it. There's some features I've not looked at though and for the one that I really want to talk about now is the SD card reader. Reading content from the SD card on these MSP2401 displays would be really useful as it provides space for large assets that I just don't have on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Remember a Pico or Pico W only have two meg of flash. There are some other RP2040 boards out there with more. Using the SD card is not only a good use of space, but also more flexible than onboard flash to manage updates to content I want to display on the TFT screen. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join my community. In this video, I'm going to focus on the SD card hardware, software libraries to read from this, and then a little on how we can work with the full screen images on the Pico. If you like this video and it helps your learning or your projects, why not buy me a virtual coffee or lunch or holiday? Use that super thanks button below the video. Please do hit the like button too to show me that you like this video and you want more content and subscribe. I do appreciate it. I've done a couple of previous videos with this TFT module. Um, this is the MSP2401, which is uh, a TFT screen driven by the ILI 9341. This module has an SD card reader on the back with an SPI interface. And it's this interface that I want to use to be able to read a file system on the SD card and that file system to have um, PNG images on. And I'm gonna try and grab those images and display them onto our TFT screen. This video is sponsored by Cancun. Cancun are a friendly online retailer in the UK for modules, components, and tools. I used Cancun to source the TFT screen in this video, along with some other components. Cancun have kindly offered a discount to my channel viewers on your first order. Just quote Dr. John EA20 at checkout to get a 20% discount. This excludes electronic test equipment and tools. Go check out Cancun today. I've previously used the connectors on the left hand side to drive the TFT to screen. We did that on both a breadboard and I showed how I've actually made a PCB with those connections on. Now I want to add the connections on the right hand side the ones that are actually connected to this SD card. Again, they're SPI interface. So you can see the clock, the MISO, MOSI, and the chip select. So where I'm using SPI1 to drive the actual display itself, I'm going to use SPI0 to actually read from the SD card. Now I could have used both the same SPI interface for both of them, as long as I'm using different chip selects uh, across both of them. Um, that would work perfectly, but I've got two SPIs, so I've chosen to use both. Those connections I've actually modelled into my KiCad um, for the actual PCB and schematic, and they're on this final PCB. We need a couple of hero projects to make all of this work, um, and so I don't have to write all of the code myself. So we're going to use a, um, a library from FreeRTOS called the Lab Project FreeRTOS FATS. This is a FAT file system um, generic library that we can use and we could use it on all, almost any platform but we're choosing to use it this time for an SD card and the porting of that to use it for an SD card and to use it on the Pico now that's been done by Carl here and I'm using his adaption library to adapt uh, this FreeRTOS FATS and port it around to run on our Pico. So all of my code, as always, is also on GitHub, and it's in the repo RPI Pico TFT 2.4. And this project is the SDPNGS project. So over in the repo in the SDPNGS uh, project, the real first thing I want to talk about here is how are we uh, setting up the hardware for this SD card reader? 
because we've already talked about the fact that this is on SPI0 and how we're configuring that. Um, and that's done using Carl's library by creating this hardware config.c file. And this is setting up and defining the configuration. So we're defining the SPI interface that we're going to be using. SPI is zero, we're on using clock on two, uh, Mosai and uh, MISO three and four, and got the board rate there as well. Uh, I switched the board rate up a bit to try and see if I could speed things up a bit. Um, and then at the chip select, um, because actually this library will support us having multiple um, SD cards, and each SD card could have its own SD card select GPIO pin. So uh, this is the uh, GPIO we're using, and I'm just using five, because I've only got one on here. And then we define where we're going to mount this device, and this device is going to be our um, SD0 and will mount under the uh, mount point stroke SD0. So it's like a file system um, like on, on Unix or on Linux and we're mounting for, um, things onto that file system at a given point. So my code that is actually going to use uh, Carl's library and FreeRTOS's library in order to work with this is actually this um, SD PNG viewer. And that's got the ability to basically be initialized to mount a SD card, to unmount an SD card, to display a given PNG file, given its uh, full path name uh, there, onto our, our display, my um, ILI 9341 driver, or indeed display an entire folder of all of the PNGs. Anything that's not a PNG, it will ignore. Um, and obviously it won't display anything that is too big to fit on the display either because there's no scaling down capability in this library. So let's just have a, a, a look at um, initially what's going on with this uh, um, file system mounting and management. So first of all, initialization. Well, um, setting all of this up is really just calling one of our uh, Carl's functions ffsd disk in it and telling it that we want to initialize sd0 which was the desk we just defined. Um, then the next bit I really need to do and I may need to keep doing this um, as cards are taken out and put back in. I'm not sure that card swapping is entirely working quite how I'd like it to but um, yeah, uh, the something to to still work on it does work uh, to a fashion um, but you we need to when a card a new card is arrived or when we first see the card to mount and um, so we're calling again one of Carl's functions to mount this particular disk if that succeeds then we add that as a file system um, and that's really all we need to do. We can also unmount the file system by removing the file system, calling unmount, and deleting that disk. So all really important bits and pieces. So once we've got the file system mounted, then we've got functions available like um, open a file, close a file, read and write to those files, or scan file systems and, and folders. And those are really important and ones that I'm going to need to use. So if we have a look at my folder management function down here, you'll find that actually I'm able to use functions from the free RTOS it is fat um, utility in order to find uh, files within a given folder uh, by name, find the next by name, and uh, use that in order to uh, construct names that I can then open, or check file extensions, open them, etc., and work with them. So I've got all of the file handling now for FAT files, which is exactly what I want to be able to do in order to start showing PNG images. To actually decode our PNG ready to actually display it on the screen, I need to use another library, and I'm going to use a library called libspng. It's an excellent little embedded library that allows us to either decode or encode PNG files. It also keyly allows us to 
work with PNGs in two ways. We can either work them with them from a buffer and decode the entire image in one go, or we can actually do it piecemeal in a sort of streaming fashion. And that streaming fashion is really important because on the Pico, we just don't have enough memory to actually take a, an entire 320 by 240 pixel image and expand it all in one go. Um, I've, we've got 260K of memory. Um, when you expand that out at two bytes a uh, pixel, you're talking about 150K of RAM. That's just not going to happen uh, on our Pico, unfortunately. So we were going to do things in an iterative manner. To be able to work with these large images, well, relatively large, 320 by um, 240 pixels, which is quite big. They're about 16K in size each. So, so to work with those and uh, the expansions of those into a bitmap, a full bitmap, so that we can actually put those on the screen. The full bitmap for this, if we expanded this to be full 32 bit per pixel, that's over 300k, which is more RAM than we've got. So it's not like we can actually expand the entire um, PNG image in one go into a full bitmap for our screen. So I'm going to have to do that in a streaming manner. Um, basically progressively going through a line at a time. To do that, I'm going to have to tell um, the libspng library how to actually access files on our SD card. And I do that by writing this read function here, which is basically a fairly standardish read um, format. Uh, well, certainly the destination and length of bits are first bits of the um, some user information which is going to be the file description for us and uh, then the context and so I this function is basically going to use the free artists fat functions to be able to read from that file and um, using the file descriptor um, and uh, do a little bit of error management and it's that function I'm going to use in my display PNG. So I'm going to be able to open my uh, file and, and the PNG name that I'm being given. Um, if that's successful, then I'm going to set up my um, SPNG library to be able to read from it. And I'm going to set it up in streaming mode by giving it this read function. Uh, and uh, I'm going to check that the image is not too big, we can actually, will be able to display it on our screen. And then uh, it's really important that I am I'm loading this in um, progressive mode. So um, it's going to be able to read it a line at a time and it's not going to get ahead of that so that I can actually control the amount of memory that we is being used. So each time we're going to decode a row, uh, grab that row and then I will place the information on from that row onto our screen. And finally to close out the um, file and free up the space that we're using on the SPNG. So I actually use PowerPoint to generate a set of images. I set the size of the slides to be 320 by 240 and uh, then I export it actually as PNGs in exactly that size and we've got all of these nice little images and they're all just being pulled from that um, SD card and displayed on the screen and you see actually it's you know relatively quick you can see it draw the lines the read from the SD card is a little bit slow I'll come back and talk about that in a second so that really works quite well and we can display PNGs straight from our SD card straight onto the screen there are a couple of limitations. Firstly, I've only been able to get this to work with smaller SD cards. Certainly putting in one of the 32 gig SD cards that I generally use for my um, Raspberry Pis won't work. They just won't handle that size of card. I think that's something to do with the SPI interface and the card being too large for it. Um, but I'm not entirely sure I understand why that doesn't work. 
Uh, there seems to be code in there to handle large cards, but it just doesn't seem to actually uh, detect them and work with them. So the largest card I've worked with on this is 16 gig, which is still quite enough for storing a whole load of images to display on the screen. The second limitation is read speed. As you can see, you can see it reading and writing to that screen. The screen refresh rate is just a little bit too slow. Now I was hoping to do PNG animations where I could actually have multiple frames within a single PNG file and I could actually be displaying some sort of animation. Um, it's just too slow to do that though. And I just don't have the RAM available on the Pico to be able to cache them. So I can't speed it up really. Now, one of the reasons this might actually be slow is because it's using this SPI interface to talk to an SD card. And that means that everything is going basically over a single wire or a single bit string. Now, there is another interface to SD cards, and in fact, more their natural interface, which is called Secure Digital Input Output SDIO. And SDIO is actually four bits wide. So that theoretically is at least four times as fast. Now that might give me the speed to be able to do animations. And I certainly have that available also for me within this library to be able to use. But my um, screen and the adapter on the screen for the SD card is not designed to run SDIO. It will only do SPI. So that's a bit of a limitation. I would have to redesign an adapter and redesign the board to be able to handle SDIO. But it certainly is one way of actually speeding this up, I think, and will get us to a point where we might be able to be fast enough to do animations. Over a few videos, I've shown the functionality and connectivity for this TFD display. For a 2.4 inch display that cost me less than eight quid, this is really quite functional. There's always more one can do. I'm a little disappointed that I could not play full screen animations on the screen. I'm just not getting the throughput from the SD card to be able to achieve that. It's possible that a move to the SDIO would resolve this. It may also solve the issue with having large cards not being recognized. That would mean ditching the SD card reader on the TFT display and building a separate module. The bones for a new project perhaps. If this video or any of my videos helped you out, why not buy me a virtual cup of coffee or lunch to say thank you? There's now the super thanks feature live on the channel. Just click the button. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then of course hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.